structure of the games, the way the board lays out. Um, everybody having their own unique board, a lot more cards getting dealt out. There's just a lot of reasons why it plays completely differently um, than that. So at the end of the day, you, you don't go far wrong in any stud variant when you play your cards fairly honestly. Um, fold your bad hands, bet your good hands. Um, now obviously the definition of a good hand and a bad hand is polar opposites when you're playing Raz and Stud, but um, you know if, if you hold fast to that to that rule where whatever game you're playing you fold your bad hands and you bet your good hands, you're you're probably going to do pretty well in Stud uh, overall. Um, and as you do more of that, you're going to see the spots that develop where you can make those more creative plays um, as they happen. Um, but they aren't going to come up as often as they come up in a No Limit Hold'em situation, and they're not necessarily going to work as often as they will work in a No Limit Hold'em situation either. <clears throat> in part because of the uh, the massive odds that we end up getting on limit games, um, but also just because people play their hands a lot more honestly here, so you're going to get called down a lot more often. Um, I think ace for four four. We're gonna play that even though we've paired the four. The the four ace is good. The deuce is, is even better. We're gonna keep throwing money in this pot. I think your rich is probably gonna come along for another street. Um, I don't think we really need to bet here. He's pretty much always calling. He sees that we've paired the deuce, so he knows that we don't have a made hand yet. He knows he's drawing to. Well, he doesn't know, but he. he we can see that he's drawing to a 5-4, or that's what we think. So now we're absolutely throwing money in this pot. Um, now that we've basically made our, um, well, we haven't made our low yet, but we look like we could have made our low, and whatever we've made, we're better than him. So that's why we put money in there. Um, if he calls, we still have a pretty good chance of drawing out to a good low. But a lot of times, if he's still drawing to a low, if the 9 is, you know, if he's paired a, a card, if the 9 is the best uh, card that he's working on, then, like you see, he's going to fold out a, a lot, and we're just going to be able to drag, uh, we're just going to be able to drag those 1,360 chips over and stack them up in our little pile, which is, you know, what we want to do, especially when we have a hand that, like that one, we're, we're sitting on two pair, we could potentially be going down in flames if we let it go to a showdown. So um, those are the spots where you really want to. It looks like I could have a good hand, so let's start putting money in the pot, and hopefully they will decide that they don't want to keep putting money in the pot. Um, you know. Ace, six, deuce. We're, uh, as I said earlier, we're kind of ignoring the queen as one of our throwaway cards. Uh, we now have to start thinking a little bit about the queen because we kind of want our nine to be a throwaway card as well. Um, but now we're not so worried about the nine being a throwaway card anymore. We're not even worried about the queen. We're going to throw some money in this pot because we're probably ahead. And now I'm not so sure, but we're sitting on a queen jack. No, we're sitting on a jack nine six. I don't really think we need to bet that, frankly. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm not really betting them off. There's really no worse hand that is calling, no better hand that that I'm that I'm getting to fold with a bet there. So I think I just have to kind of check it down and see where the cards drop. So we're down to nine, which means we're on the final table bubble. Um, we have been playing for two hours and nine minutes now. It started at 9.20 uh, Mountain Time. It's now 11.29 p.m. according to my system clock uh, here. Uh, 30 people started this uh, thing. We're down to nine left. We're on the final table bubble, as I said. Five cash. So we're nowhere near the cash bubble. Uh, that will be a... Uh, um, 
That's uh, that. That's still ways to go after we get to the final table. Ace three six. I think we'll be. I think we'll be happily playing that hand along. We don't need to go super crazy with design in there with a four, but I think we're not really going to go anywhere even when we draw the nine. We're definitely not going anywhere now. <coughs> yes, and he's going to fold at that point. Um, The nine seems to be the, a running theme at this table. If you've just uh, tuned into us and you haven't been watching for a while, there's they've been joking about anyone having having the nine showing has the nuts because they've been winning a lot when the nine has been has been showing and they've been betting into the pot. So ooh. That's uh, not a really good starting hand for Dr. Tom to be all in on, unless you're playing stud, which we are not. So we are now at the final table of the $1.10 Raz, uh, which starts at 9.20 on PokerStars. Uh, 9.20 p.m. Mountain on PokerStars. Um, there is still three more spots to go until we pay. Five payout in this one. Uh, min cash of $240, $12 up top for first. Um, and we got Delta Deuce 4-7 as our first hand at the final table, so we're probably going to be playing this hand. Um, especially when we get folds like that in front of us. I think we're going to be completing this bet, ladies and gentlemen. I think we're going to be completing this bet. I think we're probably going to get folds all around and we're going to yeah take the take the 560 chips and just stack them up in our little in our little stack beside the rail which uh, is the ultimate objective of this game and if you ever complain about about only taking in blinds and antis if you're playing hold'em or only taking in um, antis and bring in if you're p playing the stud um, think about the alternative the alternative being that you don't take in those chips and you take in zero chips. Or even worse, the alternative being you don't take in those chips and instead you put a bunch of chips in the pot that somebody else takes. So at the end of the day, if all you take and you just you just you just happily muck your cards to the middle and you pull five hundred and sixty chips over and stack them up in your little pile, that is a good hand. That is a good way to end the hand and you should be happy with what you've what you've accomplished uh, uh in the hand because you're stacking five hundred and sixty chips up in front of your uh uh in front of yourself at the poker table and that's really what you're there for is to keep stacking those little those little chips up. Now obviously if you can stack fifty six hundred chips up, that's better. But Never complain about stacking 560 chips up. That's 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 never going to be a bad thing. If you're if you're stacking chips, no matter how many chips they are, it's a good thing. All right, three, four, six. Once again, we are going to play this pot. Um, I didn't complete the bet uh, there simply because I'm disguising my strength a little bit. Um, I'm still going to dis well, no, I'm not going to disguise my strength. I'm going to throw a bet in because I want to start putting money in this pot and build a pot up. I've got. Um, by far the best hand it's looking like. Obviously, Vav here has got some, but now I've obviously got by far the best hand. So we're going to keep tossing money in, and we're either going to just 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 pull the pull the pot into us, or we're going to gonna gonna build more uh, chip equity in the pot by a tossing uh, tossing chips in. There's really no. <sighs> There's really not a lot of reason to check at that point. I don't think. So we're sitting sixth of eight now, not technically in uh, cashing position at the moment, but we're certainly not in any danger of busting. So, you know, things will change radically as the people buy for those final spots. Um, you know, so our strategy is not necessarily to sit back and watch the action, but our strategy is also not to jump in with both feet and go crazy with marginal hands because uh, you know we don't really need to 
and there's other people that are going to potentially uh, want to be doing that in front of us and end up going badly like potentially the design is about to do which he didn't because he came through and he won but he's now kind of crippled web a little bit and web is is down below me um ace do six is a hand that after all that i've said about you know being somewhat cautious at this stage i'm absolutely i'm absolutely playing this hand there's no way that i'm getting rid of this hand because uh uh it's just way too strong to to be throwing out um now that i've pulled the nine on fourth um, against a five ace and a deuce ace, I'm almost certainly uh, lighting money on fire. I think if I keep continuing in this hand, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna gonna throw out there with the ninety six. Um, I think I'm just just without question lighting money on fire, um, as I've seen. That design guy from uh, small stack to almost big stack in two hands. That's uh, that's where we are at this stage. We're playing uh, 500, 1,000, um, you know, which is pretty chunky stakes. And, you know, the things swing pretty much. Things swing a lot at these stakes. You know, one hand where I double, doesn't matter who it's against, I'm suddenly the chip leader, and they're suddenly down near the bottom of the rankings. Um, that's really as as you know all all that it needs. And with these. Uh, with these bet sizes, getting my stack in the middle is pretty easy. Um, you know, pretty much any hand that I decide to go go for broke on, I'm getting my stack in the middle with, with these stakes at this point. And the same is true for, for, for everybody. Even our top stack rat over here of 15,000, almost 16,000, um, you know, at 500, 1,000, if you start capping the betting on each round, doesn't take long to get to 16,000 chips. Um, it does not take long to get to 16,000 chips at all. So if, you know, um, uh, it, it's definitely, you're definitely in there and any one of the, you know, any one of the other stacks that are close to Rat can, can pretty much decimate him and knock him out in a single hand. Ace, King, Queen. Uh, this is one of those uh, pretty stud hands that you just, you just, you just quietly hand back to the dealer when you're playing any of the other variants of stud. Uh, stud is the only game that you would ever consider playing Ace, Queen, King. Uh, in I believe. Again, if the ace is the one that's showing, um, then you might you might use it as a bluff uh, as a bluff card. But that's really the only situation where an ace king queen is going to be a playable hand in a Raz or a stud high low scenario. I think. Ah, looks like we got a couple of more people watching the stream. Um, uh, not a huge number, obviously, but it's cool to see a few people even. Uh, say hi in chat if if you're watching and you want to say hi. Um, just to sort of remind people what we're doing here. This is the 110 Raz. Uh, what are we doing entirely with this stream? Well, I want to stream poker content that isn't Hold'em. I've got nothing against Hold'em. I play a ton of Hold'em, actually. But you can find Hold'em on TV and on streams 
all over the place. Uh, I mean, there's millions of, well, millions is obviously an exaggeration, but there's lots of people streaming uh, poker. Right here on Twitch, actually, one of the best in the world at it is Jason Somerville, uh, Jay Carver Poker. I just watched like four hours of his stream this afternoon that, that is just uh, awesome, and he's kind of one of my inspirations for uh, for doing this, so you should go ahead and do this. But, but there's tons of people that do hold them. There's not that many people that do the games other than Hold'em, and there's so much to poker that's not Hold'em. Um, I'm really looking forward to putting some Badoogie uh, on here. Badoogie is a great game that you can go in, and it's very much like poker, but you have to think in a completely different way from from every other variant of poker that you've ever played before. And it's just a wonderful way to refresh your brain if you're getting you know hung up on bad beats and hold them or whatever you just go and you do the badoogie and it's completely different a completely different way of doing things deuce four nine i think we're probably gonna i think we're probably gonna jump in with a with a bring in there and see what happens um we're pretty happy with this we're gonna throw money in the pot i think um the 10 there means we're definitely ahead of him and yeah we're gonna get folds a lot and even when we don't get folds we're not upset really because we're ahead at that point and it obviously depends on what comes out on Fifth Street, but you're pretty happy to throw money in and either collect the pot or hope, you know, or or be happy when somebody calls you. Five ten king, steaming a pile o oh dog poo. We're getting rid of that. It's nice to see some people watching and listening. I certainly don't pretend to be any sort of expert. Um, even the fact that I write for Poker News Canada, I don't think that anybody should take that as, as any sort of a sign that I'm an expert of poker by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I got the job because I'm good at writing, and I had a funny story about traveling to Montreal and back in my car from Alberta in the middle of winter, which is a lot less funny when you're actually the one doing it. Um, but the fact that I made that decision to go ahead and do that for a poker tournament was um, a relatively stupid uh, uh, move in my life that had to be immortalized uh, in press. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily say that the fact that I'm a writer for Poker News Canada has any bearing whatsoever on my poker skills, nor does the fact that I'm streaming a poker uh, live here. I'm just a recreational player who likes to play the other variants of poker, and, and likes to play Hold'em as well, but likes to play the other variants and wants to give a little more exposure to it. Um, there are s some of these games that I'm going to show, and the, the two that I've started with, the Stud High Low and the Raz, are two of them that I'm more confident in my ability on. But I'm also going to throw some stuff in here that I'm really bad at. Um, I want to show some Kershaval and some five-card PLO, uh, some five-card PLO high-low, which is just an absolutely insane... Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's just an insane fest of, of chips flying everywhere. Um, that, that, that I'm very bad at, but it's a, it's fun to watch. Uh, it's, yeah, that, I'll give you that. Uh, they're probably going to be pretty short streams when I stream those things, so I'll try to have a couple of things lined up if, if I do them. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I'm going to do a lot of things. I'm going to try to be honest uh, up front when I think I maybe, um, maybe might know a little bit about what I'm talking about, or when I'm just, just playing a game that, you know, I sort of know the rules to, and that's about as far as it goes. Um, and, you know, we'll do that uh, uh, as we go through. I want to absolutely play a bunch of horse and eight-game stuff because I really love those. They're a great way to get familiar with a bunch of different games um, and to get practice at a bunch of different games without being in a situation where you have to be able to um, make your pots on one game and one game alone. It's one of the problems with jumping into a Raz tournament is that um, you know uh, the, the, there's really only one way to make your hand. There's only one way to win the pot, and you've got to be able to do it consistently throughout the the, the course of the tournament, throughout the the stages of the, stages of the tournament. Um, in something like a horse or a triple stud or an eight game. Um, if things aren't going well for you in Raz, well, in um, you know six minutes or ten minutes, whenever the the structure changes, you're going to play some stud. 
Um, and then six or ten minutes later, you're going to play some. You're going to play some uh, stud eight, and then you're going to play some. You know, and it, it it rotates through. So you've always you've always got a bunch of ways that you can win pots and win the chips. So it's a really nice, uh, refreshing uh, form of poker to play the mixed games. Um, horse is one of my favorites. Um, eight game I love, but I tend to bust in the no limit hold'em stage quite frequently, which is annoying. Um, a horse is nice because it's all limit games, and I don't tend to bust. And the, you know, there's no uh, a no limit section to throw my chips away in. Um, so I prefer the horses and the triple studs for for that reason. Um, I'm also a big fan of stud. Obviously, I think that's that's probably pretty obvious by my first few uh, uh, streams um, that I'm a big fan of stud as well. Uh, but you know, we're going to do a lot of the other games as well. And like I say, I think probably one of my next uh, games that I want to get on here is some Badoogie, um, which is a lovely, fun game that um, not a lot of uh, not as many poker players know as as you might think. Um, <clears throat> but it is it is it is a really it is a really fun game. Um, if you check on the side of my profile, there's some links to places like Poker News Canada where you can get some good information about the poker scene in Canada and around the world. Um, and you can link up with me on Twitter there as well if you like. Uh, follow me here. Uh, follow me here on uh, on Twitter. I'm going to be doing these streams. I'm not. I don't really have a schedule at the moment. I don't really want to put out a schedule. Um, not least because. In six or eight months' time, if I'm still doing this, my schedule's going to get erratic anyways when my day job kicks into high gear again. Um, but I'm going to do a fair number of these, I think. And there's a fair number of places uh, where yeah, I can find the off Hold'em games to stream. Um, one of the places that I'm going to do a lot of, I think, is the Astronomer's Free Rolls on Stars, which, if you don't know about them, are a really good way to learn uh, the different variants as well. Um, look under free roll in the tournament section and you'll see things like Ptolemy's Deuce to Seven free roll, um, the Kepler Raz uh, free roll, the Copernicus Stud free roll, I think it is. Um, and there's all these uh, tournaments that are named after uh, astronomers. And every astronomer has their own uh, poker variant that that's been named after them. Some of the famous old astronomers, some famous new astronomers, but all kind of famous uh, famous astronomers. Um, I think Carl Sagan's is one of the new five card uh, f five card Omaha variants. Um, is 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 the Sagan. Um, and they're a great way to they're a great way to learn the games. They're free roll to enter, so you're not putting any money down whatsoever to enter the enter the tournament. Um, so it's not so intimidating, even if you've never played the game before, to to jump into a free roll like that. And the nice thing about them is, it's not just a play money for nothing or a play money for. I probably should have actually played along with a, a do six seven, um, but it's not just um, a play money for nothing. You're actually playing for a ticket that gets you into a two thousand uh, dollar guaranteed free roll. Uh, that plays every weekend. Um, that's actually a pretty fun tournament to play in, and there are also all of the different variants of poker. So you can, you know, take your ticket, and if if you liked playing in the stud high low, and you think you're you're okay at it, um, you can take your ticket. And you can throw it down the next time they play stud high low in the two thousand in the two thousand dollar guarantee. Uh, so it's a lot of fun, and you should probably look at those if you're looking to play and learn the other variants of poker, because they're a great way to get for free, uh, get free experience in the games. Um, there's some warnings, and as you learn the games, you'll figure out that there's um, a lot of people that are learning the games in there, and they're just jumping in, and you know this is the first time or second or third time they're playing, and they really don't have a good concept on what they should be doing, and what they shouldn't be doing. Um, I think it's never a good plan to be rate players at the tables uh, from a strictly shark-like perspective. Because why are you why are you getting upset at somebody's play um, when you really should be encouraging them to, to keep playing that way? Um, but especially in these free rolls, people don't even know 
what they're doing wrong and they a lot of times think that what they're doing wrong is actually right so there's just really no reason to be berating people in there so you will see stuff that maybe even looks like stupid play or whatever but it just it's going to happen in in games where you should expect that that a significant percentage of the people that enter have never played that game before um so uh, but they're a lot of fun and it's really worth uh it's really worth doing um, and it can make you some good money uh, at, at the end of the day once you uh, once you start getting through. It's not a huge it's not a huge number of tickets to entrance ratio. It's usually something like 64 or or 72 tickets given out for a tournament with four or five thousand people in it. Um, but it's also not hugely difficult to get through to the end and score yourself a ticket, especially in the off uh, holdem variants, because the it's just easier to develop an edge um, in those and get through and get the tickets, uh, or at least that's what I've that's certainly what I found with it, anyways. Alrighty, six four four is something we could play if we wanted to. But we don't really have to, so I think we're going to fold it out. Although, looking at what, what was behind us, we probably should have. I think the, the Aces is probably s sticking around. 3-5-6, um, we're going to throw some money in this pot, because I think we like this. Uh, design's really the only one that, that should be thinking about playing with me. The 8, maybe. Um, so we'll see how Vav draws out, and how we draw out. The, the nine's obviously not a great draw for us, but I think we've got to see one more street at least. Um, with us both drawing kings, he doesn't have to be on a king eight. Although he's probably on a king eight, but I think we still need to see another street just to see what comes out. Wow, we're just getting everything the same. I think we have to go through to the. I think we have to go through to seventh, frankly. So right now I'm on a nine seven six, and he's potentially on a jack eight or an eight five. I'm gonna have to probably call through, I think. Yeah, figured. Yeah, that's one of those hands that could have gone either way. Um, you know, either I end up with a big stack and Vav ends up crippled, or he ends up with a big stack and I end up crippled, uh, and it's really you know, ten versus nine. Um, as you get deep in a in a Raz tournament, the hands are just going to play out that way, and how it goes is how it goes. And you know, sometimes you're going to be the one with the big stack, and sometimes you're going to be the one with the little stack, and that's just the way Raz plays. Um, so, one of the best pieces of advice I can give for people who are thinking about taking up Raz: if you don't like pain, don't play Raz. Because if you play a lot of Raz, you will get into situations where you are in pain a great deal, where you cannot draw to save your life, and other people are drawing in spots where they have no business being in the pot, or so it looks from your perspective. Um, and it's just going to feel like you're repeatedly getting kicked in the gonads. Um, that's the way Raz is. And if you don't enjoy that from time to time and aren't able to ride that out until... Um, until better times come along, um, well, you probably shouldn't be playing Raz, is really my advice. <laughs> you probably shouldn't be playing Raz if that's the case, just because Raz is a game that will cause you pain more than, more so than any other game. Uh, I think even, even, uh, even Stud High, although Stud High can do the same thing when you're just drawing out badly or somebody else is drawing out well. Um, we're in with that. The 87 isn't great. Uh, the King 8 is obviously sucky, but um, Design's going to... Oh, Design didn't bat. Yeah, pair of kings. We're, we are check-folding pretty much all the way through on this at this point because um, no matter what these other guys are doing unless they're completely on air we're not you know we're we're having to draw draw directly to 
to uh, to low cards. Seven nine nine obviously is not something that we're terribly interested in hanging around with, so we're gonna we're gonna dump that out. We got the break coming up pretty soon. Um, so I'm gonna click off the mic again and go and do some housekeeping stuff. Just before we go, there are seven people left. We are at the final table of this 110 Raz. Uh, only five places cash though, so we still got a bit of work to do before we're taking home any money. Uh, fifth is two dollars and forty cents. First is twelve dollars. We're looking at that top prize and hoping to get it. Uh, our friend Design is uh, in the uh, top top of the uh, chip stack at the moment, uh, looking at that twelve dollars. So we're going to have to chip away his stack a bit. But right now we're sitting in uh, cash position, anyways, which is a good place to be for the time being. Um, I'm going to go do some uh, housekeeping stuff on the break, and I'll be back. Uh, see you soon.
Alrighty, I'm back just in time to see some uh, political discourse going on in the chat room. Fighting for the rights of the girls of Pussy Riot, the real warriors. Um, I don't want anybody to get me wrong. I am all for women's rights, and I am a firm believer in the fact that every human being is created equal, and what's between our legs is completely irrelevant to that, to that concern, and should be completely irrelevant to that concern. But I often wonder if uh, a lot of the support for Pussy Riot comes from the fact that they like to take their shirts off in their protests a lot, um, especially the, a lot of the support from guys, um, I kind of wonder. Um, might have something to do with it, just, just, just a thought, but, you know, that's, that's just, just my cynical, you know, my cynical take on the, the possibilities of, uh, possibilities of the world. We are back in the $1.10 Raz, started at 9.20 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time. Uh, which is uh, my time zone here in Medicine Hat, Alberta, Canada, where I am broadcasting from um, the upstairs office of my condo. Um, tonight is our Sunday Raz uh, night, uh, named in honor of the British tr tradition of a Sunday roast, um, which is a wonderful meal of uh, some sort of roast meat, the roast beef, roast lamb, roast uh, chicken, roast uh, turkey, roast ham, uh, roast pork, all sorts of various roast uh, things that they like to do, um, along with all sorts of hearty meats and potatoes and 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 vegetables and 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 just wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Yorkshire puddings and breads and things like that. Just just a great hearty, lovely, heavy heavy meat and potatoes kind of kind of kind of meal, which us uh, Western Canadian Prairie boys are are very familiar with. Meat and potatoes, heavy meat and potatoes, good solid good solid meals um so we've we've taken the sunday raz turned into or, or taken the sunday roast turned into the sunday raz and we're playing a couple of or we played a couple of raz tournaments the first one that we played was a one of the astronomer free rolls the, the kepler raz we played earlier uh was was dual tabling that and this one when i started the stream i busted out of the kepler raz pretty early in the stream tonight um, but I've been hanging out pretty well in this uh, $1.10. We are basically on the bubble now. Um, we're basically on the bubble now, and we're going to throw some money in the pot with an ace 3 5, I think. Uh, we're going to put Vov all in just because we need to at this stage of the game, um, because we've probably got the best hand, and, um, you know, a lot of the times we're going to draw out better than than he does we didn't this time but a lot of times we're going to draw out better than he does anyway so we've got a uh, with an h35 there there's just no way that you can't be putting him all in um even on the off chance that he's that he's throwing his chips in with a better hand than us um we still can't be getting away from that this is one of those spots where i've got crap cards behind but i've got an ace up front so i'm uh, throwing chips in the pot there you go. That's the power of the ace up front. Um, the other two cards you have don't matter. Obviously, the fact that these guys all folded around me and I'm fairly close in position to the to the one there makes a big difference. But um, I, it doesn't matter that the cards I had behind were crap as we went on. It doesn't matter that they were my two throwaway cards. The fact that I've got the ace up there and these two guys have high cards tells me that, that I'm going to take the pot down, um, you know, seven times out of ten when I make that raise. And that's that's absolutely value that I'm willing to willing to jump on that I need to jump on if I'm gonna if I'm gonna go through to the money on this. Uh, we're at the bubble now. Five cash in this tournament. Um, we have got uh, min cash of two dollars and forty cents with uh, twelve dollars up top for first place. Um, <coughs> Our low stack at the moment is a Vov Changa at 3560, and AcesUp.MJ is uh, the next one. I am, uh, no, I'm not. Yes, I am uh, fourth in chips, but I'm well ahead of those other guys, so I'm not in any sort of, they're the ones that really need to move before the bubble comes down. Um, so what's our... What is our nationality uh, thing look like? We've got myself from Canada, Ace is up from Canada, and Rat are all Canadian. 
Um, Vov is Russian. Design is German. Yes, design is German. And your rich is Russian. So you got a couple of Germans, or no, we got a couple of Russians, one German, and three Canadians in our final six. Um, I always like to look at the sort of national breakdown. I, it's, you, you obviously can't uh, judge anything by race or by um, nationality. But and I think I said earlier that, that as a human being, you never want to stereotype people. As a poker player, it's your job to stereotype people when you sit down at the table to a certain degree, at least as far as the poker play is concerned. And then you obviously refine that stereotype with specific information as you learn more about that specific person. Um, but you sort of have to have some image in mind when you sit down at the table and you have to be able to look at people. Um, certainly in the live uh, game and to a certain extent in the online game using their avatar and things like that. Um, you have to be able to make a quick judgment and put them in a column to start with, which they may very well move out of or you know move around in as time goes on. Um, but you know it, it's 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 something that we have to do. and part of that part of that is the information that comes from nationality um, because there are styles of poker that I think that evolve in certain areas. I mean, I don't think it's not a huge um, it's not a huge surprise that the hyper aggressive uh, new wonder kid that's coming onto the scene happens to be Scandinavian of some form or another. Um, you know, when the Finns were coming along and killing everybody it's you know there's something about a certain culture at a certain time perhaps that develops a certain style of play and I think that that you can you can use that to a certain extent you never want to rely on it obviously um, you, you know you never want to rely on it obviously but it's something that you need to do from the start so I always like to look at the, the national breakdown I don't really know that it matters that much at this point um, but the uh, Canadians are sitting third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, Russians second and uh, sixth. And obviously design is way up top with all of the chips at this point in time. Um, you know, design has twice as many chips as anybody else at the table, pretty much. Um, you put rat stack and your riches stack together and they make the design stack. You put all of the rest of our stacks together and they don't even come close to design stack I don't think so you know he has got all of the chips now if this folds around to me as it has at another time in another place against another person I'm probably raising this because the ace three is very strong in the back and I probably should be ra raising it but the queen up I'm positive that if Vav folds the, the designs going along with me and I'm just not feeling good about the way it draws out on that one which is probably a bad way to play poker um, but that said, I don't think that any time you fold your first three cards in a Raz game where one of them is a queen, you're making a terrible mistake. That's never... Folding a queen in your first three cards is never going to be a terrible mistake in a Raz tournament, I don't think. Um, you know, There are going to be times when it's maybe a small mistake. There's going to be times when the best value might be you know when you might be able to risk some extra chips and get some extra extra chips out of it um, but folding a queen is never going to be a bad thing when you've only seen three cards in a rouse tournament that's just the way it is it's never you know you're never going to be able to stand up and say that is an absolutely atrocious move no it's never going to be an atrocious move it's it's you know you got a queen <laughs> it's <laughs> your queen is not a good card when you're playing rouse
Wow, I'm embarrassed to say now my uh, my viewer counter is up to six, which is an all-time high for my stream, um, which is which is which is kind of embarrassing. But it's cool to see people watching, and I'm sure that, that things will develop as time goes on. Um, assuming people actually want to watch this and think that that I have something to add uh, to it, perhaps. Um, so welcome to everybody watching uh, now. Um, we are sitting on the bubble. Uh, I am looking for two dollars and forty cents in the next uh, uh, once somebody busts. Um, that is the first uh, min cash pay bubble. Um, and right now we're just kind of uh, I'm just kind of sitting back a little bit, holding my breath. I mean I'm not going to fold everything obviously, but I want to really see what aces aces involve. Obviously, obviously have to be the ones making the moves in the next little while. One of them. Um, to 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 stay alive, and there's really no reason to put my tournament on the line, um, in a hand, or even put myself down into their zone by getting involved in a hand when I don't have to. Uh, so, am I gonna fold every hand that comes to me? Well, no, I can't say that. But am I gonna am I gonna fold a lot over the next little while? Yeah, I'm probably gonna fold a lot over the next little while, no matter what gets dealt to me. Um, uh, there's going to be a lot of folding happening uh, over here. Uh, hey, Waskly Wabbit, how you doing? How's Raz played? Well, Raz is basically, it's a stud variant. Um, so if you know seven-card stud, it's dealt out in the same way as as, as seven-card stud. Um, the difference, of course, is that rather than playing for the best poker hand, as you would in, in, in seven-card stud, um, you know, so you uh, on seven card stud you play for the for the royal flush and the and the straight flush and the four of four of a kind and full houses and things like that. Um, in Raz, you're playing for the lowest possible hand you can get. Um, so anybody with a five four three deuce ace has got the nuts um, in Raz. So it is certainly possible to split a pot with the nuts in Raz. It's 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 actually possible for uh, well, for four people to potentially have five, four, three deuce ace. I mean, that's a pretty darn unlikely arrangement of the cards. Um, and of course, when I say that, I should add that 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 uh, mathematically speaking, it is no more unlikely than any other specific arrangement of the cards. But nonetheless, um, <laughs> it is. Uh, uh, but so yeah, basically, you're just looking for the low cards. Um, one of the tricks to Raz is that you want to make sure that you count down instead of counting up. Um, to give you an example, if uh, you're playing an 8-7-3 deuce ace, and you're up against somebody who's playing an 8-6-5-4-3, you are losing because your 87 is worse than their 8-6. Um, so it's the it's it's the big cards that matter when you're working out who wins at the end of the pot, not the not the low cards. So just because you've got the three deuce ace down at the bottom, um, that's irrelevant. It's the top cards that, that that make a difference. So that's one of the key things to to remember as sort of the first level of strategy when you're when you're playing Raz and you're working out what you've uh, what you've got. Um, but yeah, that's basically Raz, uh, Raz in a nutshell. Um, you start with three cards. Uh, there's a betting round uh, for for after the three cards, and um, for every card after that, you end up with seven cards total. Uh, four of them are dealt up. Three of them dealt down. Um, you're dealt down, down, up, 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 down, um, and. You're looking for the lowest hand, so you know, as opposed to looking for the best hand, you're looking for the crappiest hand. Um, ace three ten. This is a good example. Uh, with the ten here, you're not thrilled about it, but the ace three is something that's worth playing. Uh, we have now actually busted, so we are in the money, and we can start playing again. And I think we're definitely gonna gonna do this because at this point, we need to start pulling some chips if we want to have any hope of getting beyond a min cash. We need to start pulling some chips in from from other stacks. Um, I'm gonna follow through with your rich, and we're gonna see at least one street. Um, I like the way this is developing. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm ignoring my ten in the background there, but I'm largely ignoring my ten in the background and playing a sixty-three now. 
And I'm actually playing a 6-3 ace that is probably a 4 uh, four card. Um, yes, and, and we're getting folds out of that. Uh, for the record, I changed gears and started betting there because his, uh, uh, his cards were drawing out really, really badly. Um, and whether I actually hit my draws or not, I figured I was, I was going to end up scooping the pot uh, back to me, as is exactly what happened. Um, so away we go. Hey, we're getting more people. Uh, good to good to see a uh, good good to see a couple more people on the stream. Um, uh, I also want to add that we're on a three minute delay. Um, so I will answer questions, but I'm going to answer them uh, obviously on on the delay. So you will hear them as they come up. Um, just kind of keep letting. I'll catch what you. Uh, um, uh, catch it when they come. So uh, I will answer your questions and thank you for saying hi on the stream. But we are in a three minute delay. Um, not that I really think anybody's going to uh, uh, snipe a ton, but I just like to be on a delay because because my my whole cards are showing showing up on the screen, right? So if I'm playing live, then you know there is there's an easy chance of uh, somebody come come coming along and stealing my. Um, uh, coming along and stealing my uh, uh, stealing my cards so um, three minutes the, the delay isn't huge and obviously somebody can come along and listen to what I'm saying and and you know uh, get, get strategy from me and see my cards through three minutes later but if they want to do that hey that's cool um, that's cool it's uh, it's fun to play it's not like I'm playing for for thousands of dollars here I'm playing for twelve dollars at, at the top which is you know um, I think I said this last night, and even last night when I when we were paying playing for for more money. But it's even more true here. Um, twelve dollars is first place prize here. If twelve dollars is life changing money to you, for God's sake, please do not play one dollar uh, uh, Raz. You have got far better places to put your money. If twelve dollars is life changing money to you, then 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 you you have you have far more important places to put your dollar ten than than in a Raz than in a Raz tournament, so so the, this really should not be life-changing money to anybody uh, uh, who's playing this game. Um, so, you know, I I think at that point you just need to kind of go ahead and play, you know, and play as you go. Um, and that's one of the nice things about this is you can just kind of have fun with it and go ahead and play as long as you stay playing within playing within your limits. Ready, so it's five left. We're guaranteed two dollars and forty cents back on our one ten, um, one ten investment, um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're we're down to we're down to five left, and we're and we're cashing. We're cashing. Uh, it's actually quite fun to stream and play. I was a little worried when I first started doing this that uh, I wouldn't be able to to find things to say, or you know, I wouldn't be able to concentrate on the game I was playing or whatever, but I'm actually finding the reverse is true. Number one, I constantly seem to have something to say, and I'm constantly thinking of things that I should have said a couple of minutes ago while I was talking about this particular thing or whatever, and having to go back to it and, and yada, yada, yada. So I, I'm really not having an, any issue um, with finding um, uh, with finding things to say. And I'm finding that it's helping me. Um, I'm finding that it's really helping me focus on the game at hand because I'm analyzing what I have. I'm analyzing what I think the I'm seeing on the other boards, and it's really making me. I I I mean, I honestly think it's making me focus more on the game and making me think more about the decisions that I'm that I'm that I'm making, and ultimately allowing me to make better decisions while I'm streaming. Um, so it's cool. I mean, I think that if I can stream and I can give, show people other variants of poker and maybe give some information to, to some people about who are starting out in these other variants of poker and it improves my game at the same time, I mean, what better definition of a win-win is there than that? Um...
It's good to see some uh, people in big. As you see, we're playing Raz Poker and uh, Wastly Rabbit. Yeah, I do play. Uh, I actually play pretty much any variant of poker that I've heard of. I've tried at some point or another. I wouldn't say I'm good. I wouldn't necessarily say I'm good at any variant of poker, depending on what your classification of good is. Um, you know, I'm pretty sure that there's people that would kick my ass in pretty much every version of poker somewhere in the world uh, quite handily. Um, that said, um, uh, there's there's certain variants that I think that I'm a little bit better at than, than other variants and that I you know probably stack up slightly better than the average player um, in. Uh, but I play pretty much everything um, that comes out. It's, it's such a fun game and there's so many different variants. Um, on the stream, you're going to see a lot of Badoogie, I think, as time goes on, which is a, just a blast. I'm hoping that's going to be fun to watch as well. Um, uh, you're probably going to see Stud High Low was what I did last night. You're probably going to see a lot of that. That's one of my favorite uh, non-Hold'em variants. Um, so, so we're probably going to do a lot of a lot of that. Um, six, six, six. For the record, um, you're never calling roll-up hands in Raz. Like you're never, ever, 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 ever for any reason ever playing any roll-up hand in Raz. This, there's just there's just no ever. I mean, th there's uh, th there's almost never a time in poker uh, uh, where you say never do that. Um, never play rolled up hands and Raz. That's the closest that I've ever found to to a never situation. <laughs> um, never play rolled up hands and Raz. Um, the the uh, uh, so yeah, I mean I play lots and yeah, actually some of it is the five card. There's uh, um, there's a couple that that you're gonna see on here. Um, I'll probably I'll almost certainly play some deuce to seven, which is the low variant. Um, of five card draw, and I'll probably also play some five card draw. Now I'm utterly horrible at five card draw. Uh, I, I'll I'll be completely honest about that up front. I'll I'll probably still play some. It'll almost certainly be free rolls because I uh, I'm not uh, confident enough to, to put my own money up uh, on on five card draw yet. Um, deuce to seven, I'm a little bit more comfortable with. I'm still certainly not an expert at deuce to seven. Um, by any stretch of the imagination, but it's one that I'm willing to go in and have some fun with and play with and talk about a bit more than I could talk about the the, the five card draw hands. Um, but yeah, I like the five card uh, variants. They don't have. Um, I'm a Canadian, so actually the five card draw and the five card stud are kind of my game. Um, that's kind of a sucky way for that to, to run out, but it's, again, one of those situations where at the final table here, we're five-handed. They're going to run out that way sometimes. Um, as a Canadian, the five-card game, of course, is my kind of national game almost. We we pretty much invented the five-card draw game uh, up in the Yukon uh, and the Klondike um, uh, stuff, so it really is our, uh, it really is kind of our, our version of it. Um, and I wish... Stars ran a five-card stud um, game, but I'm not sure that that would be as much fun online as it is live. Um, simply because there's not as many betting rounds, and that's what makes um, that's what makes you know sort of the online game and gives you the, the more of the information in the online game is 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 how the betting how the betting rounds go. Um, so it may not work in the online format, but still, it, it'd be fun. But it does have the five-card draw and the uh, deuce to seven uh, games, which I will be playing some on this uh, stream. So keep uh, uh, keep your eyes peeled. Um, I'm going to try to have the name of the game in the title um, that you see at the top of the screen and it gets tweeted out when we start. So go ahead and follow my uh, follow me if you want information. Um, I don't have a schedule that I'm going to be streaming on in part because um, it's hard to find a, a specific schedule of um, of the non-hold'em variant games. Um, but 
I'm going to try to stream a few times a week at least. Um, and most likely the times that I'm going to be on are going to be in the evening North American uh, time. So say uh, 6 p.m. to midnight uh, mountain time kind of kind of things. Um, obviously, 6-5 Deuce, we're, we're, we're playing that crap out of this. Uh, even with Jack, we're still beating him. We're not beating him anymore necessarily, but we're going to play a bit more. Uh, we're in for we're in for the in for a penny and for a pound here, um, and we got lucky and won that. That wasn't necessarily something that we were always going to win, but at that point we didn't really have much choice but to keep going uh, with it. Um, so, so yeah, um, we'll we'll play uh, about the only. I said in the info section, there are going to be no rules really here, and any rules that I do make, I'm almost certainly going to break at some point because it's going to be, be convenient to do so. Um, the only thing close to rule is that I'm not going to show much hold'em on here, but of course, I'm almost certainly going to show some hold'em at some point um, in time. Um, one of the ideas I have is that I may not show my own hold'em, but I may uh, uh, pick some of my buddies, for example, that are at Poker News Canada with me and stream commentary for some of their uh, Hold'em games uh, instead and things like that. We'll play around with different formats and see you know, if, if people like certain things or don't like certain things. Um, I think there's some games that are probably going to gonna fit the streaming format better than others. I'm not sure Raz is a great game to stream um, just because there are kind of periods of of a lot of folding happening and not a lot of you know um, a lot of spots where and actually heads up when we get the heads up Raz it could be potentially just mind numbing because it's a lot of uh, fold uh, race fold race fold race fold and there's you know it really is can be potentially mind numbing uh, yeah, we're throwing chips out here. He's not going to call, and if he does call, he's an idiot. So we're going to throw chips out and take the pot down because we don't really want it to end up where somehow he sucks out on us by the river. Do showing. We're gonna we're gonna raise that with the four up. He's probably going to call us. He's going to keep calling us. So I think we're going to check through that, and I think we're going to fold. So we don't need to. We don't need to do much more with that. So we're sitting in third out of four now. Um, there's we're into the into the pay. Next uh, payout is three dollars. Um, obviously, we're not hugely worried about laddering up in terms of of. You know, getting into life-changing money or anything, as we discussed, but but laddering up is obviously the kind of the measure of where you're going to end up in a poker tournament, and it also feeds your feeds the health of your bankroll, obviously. So you want to go as high as we, you know, you know, as high as we can. So that's uh, three left now. Um, so next uh, third out is four dollars and fifty cents. Uh, I am now clearly in third place. Which means that I have to move at some point here very quickly. Um, although, if I can keep my head down, it's entirely possible that Rat and Design will get into something, and Rat might go out first. But um, I shouldn't count on that. I'm going to need to play a hand that's that's um, you know I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to take some chances here coming up pretty quick and it's gonna be a case of um, we're going to heads up or we're done yeah we'll bring in fold with this again I think um, you know we I'm not in a huge rush necessarily to get um, to get going. I've got you know time to sit around and go. Yes, I'm feeding money into the into the antes and and so on. But you know we're still not sitting in a huge spot. I also know that when I do get involved, 
I need to get involved with uh, gusto and um, strength and power and basically be willing to throw my entire stack in the middle this might be the hand for the record that I'm willing to throw my entire stack in the middle um, I think we're throwing 300 in and we're gonna see what 4th Street is and 4th Street is gonna determine whether our stack is hitting the middle and our stack is hitting the middle we are uh, throwing as many chips into this as we possibly can. Okay, they're gonna fold on us, and that's cool. That's cool. I mean, again, uh, never when you're stacking chips up in front of you, never complain about the size of the pot that you've taken. It doesn't matter whether you're whether you're taking um, simple bring-ins, whether you're taking um, you know blinds and antes in a in a hold'em game. Um, never complain if you're stacking chips in front of you that's 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 never a bad thing um, I've said that before and I'll say that again I will say that as often as I as I possibly can um, uh, sorry I haven't been uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to keep track of the uh, uh, chat as well but being being three-handed I'm, I'm paying attention to, to the board a little bit as well um, Yeah, Raz. Um, Raz is actually um, a, a seven-card hand. It's not eight cards. It's seven cards, um, and you use the best five of your seven cards. So it's actually the same as Hold'em in that sense, because Hold'em you get two cards down, and you get five cards on the board, and you use the best five of all seven of those of those card uh, combinations. Um, so it's similar to, to PLO in that in that sense. The difference, of course, is that everybody has their own board instead of playing off a community board the way you do in in Hold'em. Um, so yeah, I can use any five, and it doesn't matter if they're the first ones or the last ones. It's not like PLO where uh, or Omaha where you're forced to use certain numbers of cards from your hand and certain numbers of cards from the board. Um, I can use any combination of five cards from my uh, uh, from my hand in stud or the stud variants and it will play uh, properly um, so yeah I do know PLO a little bit I know I obviously know how to play PLO I don't think I'm very good at it um, it's a very swingy game where you throw a lot of chips into the pot with the nuts and it's not the nuts by the end of the hand it's not even close to the nuts by the end of the hand um, it's a really but it's a fun game to play and I like playing it I just I, I don't think I'm very good at it and I certainly don't have a have a big edge um, at it now PLO 8 uh, or the high low version of pot limit Omaha um, and the high low version of limit Omaha you will actually see a fair bit of on here um, because I quite enjoy those and I find those as an unusual um, variant. I'll probably play some PLO on here because it's not Hold'em, which is part of my theme to play anything but Hold'em uh, on here. Um, but PLO is like the new Hold'em. Um, if you get my drift, everybody's moving to PLO and playing PLO, and there's a lot of, there's even a PLO being shown on TV now a fair bit. There's, um, um, there's PLO streams happening. There's a lot of people doing PLO uh, uh, training and training sites and books and videos and things like that. So part of my part of my my desire here is to bring exposure to some of the games that don't get very much exposure from other people um, and so as a result I will tend to shy away from playing PLO on here and uh, more towards some of the variants that don't get played as often Alrighty, drawing the 10 out here, I think we need to fold this hand. Uh, we were on a nice little run there of pulling some pulling some pots in, but um, that one isn't going to work so well. Um, I don't think we need to get involved here with the king back either. With any luck, rat will get involved and go crazy. 
um, and and bust out, and we'll end up heads up against the, the design. In which case, even with only eight thousand chips, anything can happen once you're heads up. Um, I don't hugely expect design to be somebody that I'd have an edge on huge up or heads up. I don't think that I'd be a huge dog against them heads up either. Uh, I think we'd be relatively even. Of course, with the chip stacks the way they'd be, um, I'd of course be a dog in that in that sense. Um, you know, it's I can't say I'm not a dog when I'm eight thousand to fifty thousand. That's 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 a little that's a little silly. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but I wouldn't be a dog as far as ability was concerned. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about the cough. Um, and actually, a while back, I was kind of looking at it, going, "It's entirely possible that Design and I could end up heads up in this thing." Um, but equally, just as easily, there's no reason why why I not going to bust out third and, and Rat and Design are going to go heads up. I mean, we're pretty evenly, uh, what I've seen, we're pretty evenly matched. Um, right, this is a hand where we're putting as my, many of these little round bedding orbs into the uh, middle of the uh, table as we possibly can, uh, no matter what he's doing, because this is it. I mean, we're either going, we're, we're, we're going big or we're going home. That's the way we go. Draw. Draw, no matter what we draw on fourth, we are, we are, we are in. We're in for, in for a penny, in for a pound. Wow. Wow, and that draw was just horrendous and atrocious. Wow, that's one of those cases where you just kind of stumble back because somebody's just just kind of kind of booted you in the gonads, because um, because it's the way it goes. But uh, hey, well you know that's that's life, and you win some, you lose some, and in this case, I actually lost and won some all at the same time because I I, I lost the uh, uh, I lost the hand and I lost the game, but then I went third and got four dollars and fifty cents for my one dollar and ten cent uh, um, investment. So. I'm glad you guys uh, joined me today. Um, we are coming to the end of our streaming a day, I think. It is close to 1 o'clock in the morning where I am, so I'm going to curl up to my little bed and, and go to bed now that I've, uh, I've, I've made my, my little profit, uh, profit thing going. Um, I appreciate the uh, new viewers that have come in. Um, pay attention. Follow me along here if you uh, like what you've seen. Um, I'm going to be playing, uh, like I say, a fair bit of the odd games, and um, yeah, Waskly, uh, I'm I'm going to have to call it a call it a night for tonight. But follow me, and uh, you'll get Twitter uh, Twitter um, announcements whenever I go live, uh, and you'll be on. I'm going to look at doing some stuff tomorrow. Uh, no, actually, I won't be doing anything tomorrow. Uh, but I'm going to look to do some, some stuff on Tuesday, so uh, come back and uh, have a look around on Tuesday and and uh, see what happens. I'm probably going to play on Tuesday. What I want to do is play some uh, tournaments, but also have the uh, final table of the World Series of Poker uh, playing in the background um, and doing some, perhaps, commentary on that as it plays out as well. Um, but uh, I obviously won't be able to show that for copyright reasons, but I can talk about it as it's playing, because, you know, I'm watching it here, and there's no reason why I can't talk about it. So I'll try to do that on Tuesday night, um, but tomorrow night I'm going to be busy playing live PLO tournament in uh, Calgary, which is a few hours away. Uh, so I'll be doing that, uh, having some fun live. Um, so it was great to have you guys listening in. Um, we are up to uh, nine viewers now, which is a, a lifetime high for this stream. So it's awesome to see you guys here. Click, uh, click the follow button and you'll be around for the next time we're online. Um, and um, who knows what we will plan next time. With uh, I'd, I'd certainly like to put some Badoogie on soon, and I'd certainly like to put some Horse on soon. Um, I might actually stream in the morning tomorrow. I said I wasn't going to stream tomorrow, but I might stream during the day tomorrow because there's a horse tournament at 10 a.m. that I might just throw on the stream. It's going to be a very low low buy-in, but it might be fun to throw on the stream. So we'll see what happens, and we'll see uh, how I feel. But uh, thank you all for listening. 
uh, I am going to... Uh, um, uh, well, why don't we actually stay on and commentate since we're sitting here? Why don't we stay on and commentate for the rest of the... Uh, uh, for the rest of the tournament here, since uh, uh, since we're here, it doesn't look like it'll be going on too much longer. Um, people are going uh, big uh, here, so we'll see we'll see how it goes. Um, Jack against four should be a fairly straightforward hand. So it's one of the problems with heads up uh, Raz is that it's it's a lot of um, bring in raise now. Um, So this one, it looks like the design wants to get it over with, or double, double rat up. This looks like it's over. I think. Yeah, we're done. So the the, the design takes down the twelve dollars. Rat finishes with eight ten. Uh, I pulled down third place for four fifty. We had fourth place of or er, uh, fourth place of Yurik two forty eight for three dollars. And aces up, MJ uh, pulled in fifth place for two dollars and forty cents. Uh, so thanks for uh, thanks for hanging around. Thanks for playing. Thanks for watching. Uh, like I say, click the follow button, and you'll be able to uh, follow me. Um, follow me, and you'll be able to be online whenever I'm around uh, for for playing. And I'm going to try to do at least two or three a week. Uh, over the next little while as I can and see how it goes and see how we develop. Tell your friends if you like, uh, if you've got friends who want to learn how to play some of the other games and like some of the other games or if you've got anyone else, uh, tell your friends, tweet tweet, a, tweet about us, uh, you know. Um, we'll see you soon. It's been fun and we'll see you soon with another uh, non-Hold'em poker game soon. Uh, good night, folks. See you tomorrow.